If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and go to training.mammothinteractive.com where we have tons of more videos just like this. Hello everyone and welcome back to our section on learning how to build collectible coins. Previously, we learned how to build a coin prefab and we learned how to spawn coins randomly with a script. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to rotate our coins with a script so that they're spinning on their axis instead of just sitting there. So join me back in our project. We're going to select the coin prefab. If you double click on the coin prefab, it will take you to the prefab editor. For each coin, we want to add a script so that the script will rotate the coin. I'm going to add a new component of a script machine to the coin prefab. Then I'm going to create a new script graph, which I will call coin. Hit enter, and that will add the graph to the script machine graph property. Then hit edit graph to open the graph view. Here we have two events on start and on update. We can remove on start and just work with on update for now. So on update is going to run every frame of the game. And what I want to do is rotate the coin on every frame. So I'm going to drag off a wire and look for the rotate function. We have different options like rotating with Euler's, the rotation to apply in Euler angles. We have as well relative to, which is determining whether to rotate the game object locally to the game object or relative to the world. Just the Euler angles, rotating with X, Y, and Z axes. And here, same thing, but without the relative to. Rotating on an axis with some kind of angle with relative to or not relative to. So let's select transform, rotate, axis, angle, relative to. So here, let's start with the first pin, which is this. This refers to what object are we actually rotating? We're choosing this because we are going to rotate the coin. Next up, we need to select the axis to rotate on. If you put a zero for that axis value, then you will not rotate on that axis. But if you put a one, then you will rotate on that axis. And we can try out all three axes. We also need to specify the angle of rotation. So I can put in an angle here like 10. So this means every frame, I'm going to take the Y axis because the three values represent X, Y, Z, and I'm going to rotate it by 10 degrees. As well, we have one more pin relative to where you can set, do you want to rotate relative to the world or relative to self? So now we can close our script graph and press play and see the changes that are, will be applied. And look at that, we have our coin rotating really fast. All right, so the reason the coins rotate so fast is because of our value 10 here. We can change this to one and they'll rotate a bit slower, 10 times slower to be exact. So here we can now see the coins are rotating bit slower. All right, so we can set the rotation and we rotated on the Y axis. So if you open the coin and you go to the rotation tool, you can see the Y axis is rotating this way, which might be a bit misleading. So you have to be aware of the coin in the world space. So if I add the coin to the world space, then I can zoom in on that coin and you can see on the Y axis, we rotate again, All right? So then we have the x-axis we're rotating, and then we have the z-axis on which we're rotating. So we can experiment with the different axes until we find the one that is the correct rotation that we want. For example, we could do one on the x, which means we're only rotating on the x-axis. If you hit play, you'll notice the rotation will be on a different axis this time. There we go. So you have to experiment until you find the kind of rotation that you want. Do you want to rotate on the x-axis, the y-axis, or in this case, we're testing out the z-axis. If we run the game, we'll see that the rotation appears to not even occur, but it's actually occurring on the z-axis. So this tells me that we want the rotation to be on the y-axis as we had before. So our axis value will be 0, 1, 0. One more thing we have to adjust 
is the value of our rotation speed, which currently is one. However, we have to consider the frame rates of games because on some old devices, some low power devices, a game might run at 30 frames per second. But if you have a more high quality running ability, like if you have a high speed computer, then your game could run at 120 frames per second. But if we have our on update event being called 100 times per second instead of 30 times per second, it means that it will spin the coin a lot faster if we're spinning it 100 times a second instead of just 30 times a second. So we have to make sure that we don't have that issue. We don't want the rotation speed to be different on different devices. We want the rotation speed to be consistent regardless of the frame rate. So in order to address this issue, we can use what's known as delta time, which means a value will actually be adjusted for frame rate, which means that even if the game is running at 30 frames per second on an old phone or if it's running at 100 frames per second on a new computer, the rotation speed will be adjusted so that it actually stays the same in terms of how the speed looks at the end. So we can use delta time. All you have to do is take a value and multiply it by delta time. This means that the value will be adjusted with respect to time. So regardless of the frame rate, the speed will look the same. So instead of just using one, I'm going to multiply. So I'm going to add a node and I'm going to have a float literal to represent my speed. So let's here create a float literal and we can have our speed of one and we can adjust that over time. Then I'm going to take that one and I'm going to multiply it. So I'm going to search for a multiply node, multiply a scalar, and I want to multiply one by delta time. So I'm going to drag off a pin and get delta time. Then I can take the result, the product, and assign that to be the angle. So instead of using one, we're using one times delta time, which means that the one will be adjusted for different processing speeds, different frame rates. So if we go into our game this time, we can close our script graph and press play. You can inspect the rotation. All right, so this time you may notice that there's no rotation, but in fact, it's actually just rotating really slowly. So I'm going to edit my graph and I'm just going to change my float rotation speed to be 100. Then I can close my graph and try playing again. And this time we will see the rotation because now we've increased the speed. So because we had delta time, the speed was really slow because we were multiplying one by delta time. So we just had to increase our speed to 100. As well, one thing that we should adjust here is we should remove the magic variables. So here, if you ever have a value that here is just a value on its own, it's not assigned to a variable, that's known as a magic number. And you want to remove magic numbers wherever possible while programming, which means you want to assign a name or a variable to each value. So instead of using 100, when we come back to this graph, we might be confused. What does this 100 mean? I can't remember anymore. Well, in that case, we want to convert this 100 to a variable so that other developers and ourselves in the future, we understand what the 100 is trying to represent. And in fact, you should actually do this with all your numbers. Make sure you explain each of the numbers. So let's create a graph variable, which means it's just available in this graph, and we'll call this our rotation speed. The type is going to be a float and the value will be 100. Then instead of using 100 as a float literal, I'm going to get my rotation speed. This way, it's just more clear what that 100 actually represents. It represents the rotation speed. And if you close your script graph, you'll notice the game will run exactly as before. Right? So the coins are rotating exactly as we saw them previously. All right, so there we have our coins are now spinning. Coming up next, we're going to continue our coin collectibles section, and we're going to learn how can we increase the score when the player collides with a coin.
so don't miss the next lecture. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.